Hello and welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we discuss the biggest entertainment stories. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I've got my co-anchors with me, Ewa Oluwa Ritu and Ife Oluwa Oshunkeye. Hi. How you guys doing? <laughs> People yes. should stop making me you laugh just like me this. properly. What is? Hi. Hi. She is not. Ife Oluwa do get gay. Huh? Do get gay. Very very upset. Oh yeah, calm down. Take a deep breath. Okay, babe, calm down. Ah. Are you fine? <laughs> I'm better now. All right. <laughs> All right, so let's get right into the stories for this episode. Drake is to visit Africa in March 2020. The Canadian Grammy winning rapper will visit Nigeria, South Africa, and Ghana. This is part of six city tour of Africa. He will be visiting three cities in South Africa, two in Nigeria, and one in Ghana. A look at the tour breakdown implies that he will be in Johannesburg on, on 18th of March, Durban on the 20th of March, Cape Town on the 22nd of March. All that is in South Africa. And then Accra, um, Ghana on the 27th of March, Lagos on the 29th of March, and Abuja on the 30th of March. Okay. I, mean, I think I'm looking forward to this I'm one. So I mean, excited. I love Drake. So, yeah, it's a good one. I don't know why. why okay, why? 3 to 1. Okay. Mm. Yeah, 3 to 1. Obviously, the biggest cities in yeah. uh, Nigeria, Lagos, um, Abuja. And then South Africa. And then South Africa, obviously, Cape they Town, have three Dubai, major cities. Yeah. The, um, Accra is That's the biggest like city yeah. in, in Ghana as well. So, I think it's a good ratio mm -hmm. for. To visit. So big Do you think we'll them. have a lot of drama like we had with Cardi B? Well, I just hope it gives us a, a, enough um, exposure like Cardi B did. Yeah, I was mm -hmm. going to say that I hope it will be really available for people to take mm -hmm. into places where it's going mm -hmm. to have fun and it won't be like just guarded, guarded. Yeah, guarded but let's, let's not try to benchmark anyone with Cardi B because that woman is on another level and vibe no, at not, all. So I mean, that can never when, be the standard because uh, no one can meet it. When um, Future came, it wasn't a big yeah. deal. Mm -hmm. and every, I don't think anybody had a problem with it. I mean, we're different people and mm -hmm. we do things differently, differently. Mm -hmm. okay so let's just hope he um keeps up with um kind of be standard and tries to he be can't keep yeah up because with i really want to, i just I want really him to want be drake <laughs> basically just be drake and have fun I, I try mean, to I, have for fun for me i really want him to be very free with people so yeah you know, no, we'll the reason why together. i'm even saying that i hope is that because it creates a level of exposure for mm -hmm. us because um Cardi B and Future, I don't think our Future has an, um, as much followers as Cardi B on social media. Of course not, yeah. yeah so um, if people like Drake has over 45 point something million followers or even more, I'm mm -hmm. not sure right now. The last time I checked, which is about three or four months ago, mm -hmm. he had about 45 million followers. So imagine a Drake with that much followers talking about Nigeria. It's, it's increasing our tourism standard. And I like that he's, he's coming to Nigeria as the last place. So he's, I've, I hope that he's going to be compare. more relaxed and uh, really enjoy. No, it's I not a case of I'm finishing here. No, no, no. Except out. he has, I know he'll be stressed out, but except he has another tour he's starting immediately in April, he could kind of relax and decide to chill, to explore what the I cities being instead the of last, rushing back. That's what I'm looking what at. What I think being the last country might do in our favor is that you will be able to control compare the vibe from mm -hmm. South Africa to Ghana then Nigeria. So if Nigeria is giving him a, a whole and um, brand new vibe entirely than what he got from the two previous countries he's been to, obviously that would boost his uh, mojo and it would be like, oh yeah, now this is the country. You get okay, so I mean. now so, Drake has about 62.8 million followers. 62 so point, that's, yeah, that's so that's huge. why I said that three months ago. He that's had like about a country. 45. That's bigger than Ghana, though. Yeah, be way, way, way bigger than Ghana. Okay. Ghana has about 22 million um, people in mm -hmm. their population. Like so. Lagos. Like mm. Lagos, yeah. Okay. Drake, we're waiting for you. <laughs> and we're ready for you. Come, come, champagne come. papi. Come. Okay. Mix a champagne mommy. Oh, yeah. Come, so you're living in Aramali now? I was never with Naramali. <laughs> I was just yeah, a yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 I said, let's not even. Who will you be with Naramali and Drake come? Who will you go with? Uh, that question, as in. Please, you dump uh, him like. Uh, is that how you used to dump yeah, him? Yes. Yeah, 
Ah no, we'll, see, even if she does it, we'll dump him for her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next story. Kate Hudson is under fire for promoting tourism in Dubai. She has been accused of overlooking the terrible human rights record of the United Arab Emirates. The actress documented her recent trip to the region on Instagram, sharing images of, and a video promoting travel to the city. Some social media users were quick to jump on the post, branding the star irresponsible for glossing over the fact that homosexuality is still illegal in the country. Uh, the comment said, in Dubai, you risk, you risk many more years in prison for being gay. This is one of the truths that lies behind the Emirates' insta-friendly fa facade. Um, the truth is that a, brut a brutal reality is hidden behind the city's glamorous facade. Another added um, that why support the government and tourism there? You have so much money already. They literally kill people for being gay, end of quote. So... I think these people are very uninformed because um, if you know about Dubai, you know that it's an Islamic country, mm -hmm. and obviously homosexuality is not something they condone. In, um, yeah, that's what they're saying. Yeah, and yeah. So that's nothing like human rights violation, if you ask it me. It actually is. How? It is killing human rights. Killing people for their doing sexuality. their sexual orientation, what, what they decide wait, to do what with a, what themselves. Does, what does the Islamic um, standard? Islamic what, what standard is, is different from human rights. Mm. No, I think it's just like you stay talk, talking about Sharia law and saying, okay, so Sharia law okay, is I human feel, rights. Feel, okay, now. okay, now, now I get where you're coming mm -hmm. from. Now that I'm thinking about it, but I'm saying that okay, this is something that's unobtainable. Dubai is not the only place who is doing that. It's Saudi Arabia will probably do the same thing. You're even you going know? too far. When I Tano. read this, what I'm thinking is, you know, we've been talking about um, people, us trying to promote Nigeria as a tourist destination. Yeah. So if, for example, our leaders wake up to understand that tourism is one of the uh, biggest ways to make money and they want to take it serious and they try to use some of this um, American um, influencers and actresses and celebrities this is definitely the kind of backlash we are going to face also because we also have a law that says they spend 40 years in, years in jail so that was where I was looking at it from as much as I feel like they don't have the right to even tell her what country to promote or what not to promote but I'm looking at it from the angle of saying so if tomorrow Nigeria is ready to do what they're supposed to do we still have to go back to our laws to understand or to know if it um, accommodates the kind of human rights that is globally um, acceptable. That's where I was looking at it from. Okay, for me, when I saw this, I was just like, well, maybe she didn't even see it this way, this whole um, gay thing. I'm sure it probably never even came to her mind. She just, it was just a project that was brought to her, and she probably got, got paid for it. I'm like, okay, this is business. Let me just make money, mm -hmm. and that's it. I'm sure she probably didn't look at it from, oh, they kill gay people. Or, she probably does not even know all those things. She just got the deal, and she mm -hmm. went for it. I think people should slow down and drag in her. But even if she does, that is what I'm talking about. I mean, she's not saying go to Dubai to go and practice your sexuality. She <laughs> right. not say, I mean, you decide if you want to go. It's your, like for a different purpose, it's your job to make research. You understand if your lifestyle you're is acceptable, to. where you're going to, what you are to wear, what you're not to wear, how you're mm. to look, what, what food is um, available for you and I how mean, to if you're, prepare. If you're leaving your country to go to another country, it's just mm. okay and just normal that you obey the rules and regulation in that country. Mm -hmm. exactly. If you feel that it's not okay for you or it's against Choose your sexual orientation, yeah. Yeah. Saying yeah, that, um, Nigeria is um, also um, violating human rights in the world because um, if you're saying 14 years imprisonment mm -hmm. for homosexuality, are you saying Technically, that? we're on the same table with Dubai. Yeah, on so we're one. on the yeah, same basically. table with Dubai. So um, at the end of the day, I see nothing wrong with what um, Hudson did because mm -hmm. um, she, um, what's it called? She's it's promoting. And it's a paid promotion. Like, people didn't get the point that this is paid. No, they got the point. That's why they said, they said she, she already had, had money. money. So, so she can't turn it down. Who has enough money? <laughs> I, I who mean, to who in are Nigeria? you to even tell me I have Yoruba? enough money? I don't have <laughs> enough money. Even Dangote, 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 still there for money. You know. Da -na -na. <laughs> Do you understand? Like, come on. Like, money is never enough. Mm. Do you understand? It's like, um, What's it called now? What, what can I put this in with money? Life is never enough. Do you understand? Mm. Like even... A, 24 a, hours is never enough. Yeah, a 124-year-old man still doesn't want to die. Hmm. 
Says who? Hmm? Says who? No, unless you have um, bad health, but as long as your health is good, you don't want to die. But for me, I totally agree. She has not done anything she wrong, hasn't and I done think people anything. should slow down dragging. I mean, she wants to make more money. And I think all these gay activists, they are too extra. They just, I don't know, but um, we're going to... a good chance to practice in some countries, so just move to those countries. <laughs> it's that simple. <laughs> okay, so before we go on a break, please be reminded that the team at the Stitch Slayer made this cute tissue box. And because in 2020, like I said, you cannot afford to be boring, you need to switch things up by spicing up your space with beautiful accessories. Visit at the Stitch Layer on Instagram to get yours today. At the Stitch Layer on Instagram. We'll go on a quick break, but when we come back, tea time continues. <laughs> Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Ali Alibaba? Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do Everybody feeling all right. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself minimal eye. You. Mm. Apala music is from mature-minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi. Like, what? Sleeping early. Sleeping early. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Jay Z and Yogoti are suing head of Mississippi prison over inhumane condition. Clarion Ledger reports that the lawsuit was filed on Tuesday on behalf of 29 inmates. The lawsuit the, um, states that individuals held in Mississippi's prison are dying because Mississippi has failed to fund its prisons, resulting in prisons where violence reigns because prisons are understaffed. In the past two weeks alone, five men incarcerated in Mississippi have died as the result of prison violence. These deaths are a direct result of Mississippi's utter disregard for the people it has incarcerated and their constitutional rights, end of quote. In addition, according to the complaint, um, black mold, rats and mice infestations, flooding and units um, with no running water or electricity for days at a time are among the deplorable conditions inmates are subjected to. The lawsuit requests a judge to order the defendant to enact policies that will protect inmates from violence, provide an adequate amount of properly trained staff, as well as provide safe and clean conditions along with other basic human needs. All right, so um, I want to make reference to the, um, what's it called now, the Eight Amendments, which they made reference mm -hmm. to, and it says that this prohibits cruel and unusual punishment. It applies to those who are convicted of a crime, but not the um, pretrial pre detainees. Convicted prisoners, therefore, have a constitutional right to medical care. The United States Supreme Court set the deliberate indifference to serious medical need as a standard that constitutes unnecessary and want an infliction of pain prescribed by the Eighth Amendment. So basically, it's saying that they are entitled to medical care, good living conditions, and all of that. So if none of this is being given to a detainee, I mm -hmm. mean to a convicted felon mm -hmm. or somebody in prison, then you're you're bridging a constitutional right which is entitled to them. So, and they're saying that this Philadelphia jail system is known for this violent crime. Mississippi. I'm sorry, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. I said Philadelphia, yeah, because mm -hmm. that's where I want to go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go to Philadelphia jail? I don't understand. I, I, I mean, I, that's why I said ha. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Continue, continue. Do I even look like someone that was surviving, Joe? You actually you do, fam. I look like someone <laughs> that was surviving, Joe. Okay, yeah, I'm G'd up like that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Mayan. So, you go and come yes, back motivated. Any love over, what did you say? Atila today. Atila today. Ewa de miladi. Ah, I am. All right, 
so basically, um, Mississippi is saying that look, there are a lot of people that have died um, from violent crimes in there because they have their understaff. Mm -hmm. They really do not have um, professionals. There's mm -hmm. no adequate training for even their security personnel and yeah. all of that. And these people were there to be corrected, not to be killed. So. Yeah. So yeah. if it's a rehabilitation place, I think these people. I know. Yes, they're criminals. They have made a mistake, mm -hmm. and they're in jail for them to be rehabilitated. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you should not treat them like they're not humans. Mm -hmm. Even though some of them committed crimes that are inhumane, mm -hmm. you get me. So, but at the end of the day, I think um, I like what Jay Z is standing up for, and your God is. So it still it's boils down to the reformation of the um, prison system, prison system mm -hmm. which someone like um, what's her name, Kim Kardashian, is also mm -hmm. on, and a lot of other celebrities. Um, what's his name now? Why Philadelphia? Uh, why Philly came to mind is because Meek Mill is also yeah. doing the same thing for the Philadelphia jail system. Them, which you was incarcerated in as well. So I think um, this is very commendable, very. and I'm really, really proud of this because the fact that they're criminals doesn't change the fact that they're humans. And mm -hmm. we are talking about um, what's it called? Um, human rights violation. Mm -hmm. This is still human rights violation. And according to the Eighth Amendment, it's a violation of their rights. All right. I mean, this is just a very right move and very thoughtful because these people, most, some of them are still going to come out back to the society. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you've treated them like animals, do you expect to them to do you expect like, them to like come back and to come back mm -hmm. and act like humans no they'll probably go and do worse things than what they did and then again. get back to jail again that's why if you notice the circle is always like that mm -hmm. they come out of jail commit another crime and go back again because there's no kind of um training on there's no information or there's nothing given to them in there they're just there suffering there's no bed to sleep sleeping on the floor you know eating bad food and flawed, flawed. it's just terrible and i don't think any human being you know should go through or even if though they are criminals Mm -hmm. You just, they are, like you rightly said, they are there to reform them. Mm -hmm. Teach them what they don't know now. So when they get back out, they would be better. And let's not forget that there are some people that are innocent and they are in jail. Yeah. Imagine they are going through all that. Mm -hmm. How do you, I mean, how do you expect them to feel and the, cope? That would probably even turn them to criminals. Criminals, they're, they're you know. Because a lot of people get initiated into court in jail. Yeah, especially so when you have to fight to survive. To survive, and get the, you know. The two basic amenities. I mean, if you are in a certain environment, that is at least clean, giving you the basic mm -hmm. amenities. You could find time to now sit down mm. and, and reflect. think, reflect. And some people go to jail and get their degree in mm. jail yeah, right. because the environment was it's conducive conducing. enough to give them these opportunities and give them time and space to read and all that and be better um, people for it. So I'm I, sorry. I, I mean, I would, I would like to relate that to Nigeria right now. Mm. I'm, <laughs> I'm so, I mean, I'm so impressed because there are a lot of groups that are standing up for this kind of thing too, mm. for proper. Um, um, reformation in prison and we had a guest on the news was it last week um, and he came to talk about how about three people in prison now um, they are now it doctors it was yeah, yeah it was yeah. a monday and then he spoke about so many prisoners that now have their um certificates some are even doctors and that's so impressive mm -hmm. and aside that um still talking about nigeria we always have to drag nigeria into all of this but mm -hmm. it's because we need a change right so nigeria look at the living condition in most of our prison systems um, mm -hmm. it's overcrowded mm -hmm. you have like 40 people in one jail cell that he just for like three people that he's supposed to be for like three or four people mm. you have 40 people being squeezed in one jail mm. They, People that have not even been sentenced yet to. You, that they, 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 they have, apart from being sent, they haven't even gone to trial. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. To even talk about getting sentenced. Sentence, right. They haven't even gone to trial. And then you pack all of them like sardine in one small room. Mm. And then you expect these people to come out better. Mm. It's not possible because... So I think um, we should also look into the reformation of the Nigerian prison system. That's one of Yeah, that's of why I said people, people are already working already on already having yeah. certificates and all of that. That's like a ratio of zero points. Right. Do you understand? But at we the end of the day... We can still do better, right. We can right. do a whole lot better. Okay, that's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. And remember, you can watch this episode all over again by subscribing to our YouTube channel, La Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on R2 TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always go to my co anchors, Ewa Oluwa Witu and Ife Oluwa Shunkeye, and the entire production team. My name is Elsie Godwin saying thank you for watching and see you later.